to get similar results that they got from 30 minutes of eccentric training in this study, they had to perform three to, three to five times a week an hour. So that's three to five hours compared to, compared to one, 30 minutes. One 30 minute session. One 30 minute session. Wow. All right, hey everybody, my name's Connor and I'm an instructor here at Resistance. And I'm Thurston, CEO and founder of Resistance. And this is episode one of the Resistance podcast. We're going to talk all things resistance, but specifically today we are going to get into the benefits of eccentric training. Whatever that is. Whatever that is, whatever that uh, word is. And specifically, super maximal eccentric training, which any of you guys that train with us, you know that we toss that around a lot. Uh, But it's super beneficial and there's a lot to it. So we wanted to dedicate a podcast to talk about it. So Thurston, uh, let's start off. Uh, You've been working in the industry for like 30 years. Yep. You started in Ireland, you moved over here 10, 12 years ago? Full time, yeah. Full-time. I was over in back since 2008. Yeah. yeah, so obviously here at Resistance we have, we've been working and partnering with Vitruvian, so we have some really cool machines that are allowing us to do eccentric training. But before that, I'm just kind of curious, how did you start to get into eccentric training? When was the first time you mm-hmm. heard about it? How are you implementing it? And how does that lead us to today? Yeah, well, it, it's funny because I've really went deep into the research a lot more in the last year or two because mm. it's, you know, because of these machines, it's more practical to do. And again, we'll, we'll go in and explain this, but the eccentric training. But just to kind of back up a little bit, the first thing that I always kind of think about is resistance training to me is one of the most incredible things that you can do that's going to completely transform your health, your shape, and your quality of life. Mm. And I would argue it's the single most effective thing that's going to do those things. I mean, there's always this argument, which is better cardio or, or mm-hmm. resistance or strength training. Um, but you can get cardiovascularly fit from strength training anyway. And most people very easily can do some type of cardio. I mean, you go for a walk, you go for a run, cycle, swim. But when it comes to strength training, very few people do it and do it effectively or consistently. And, and the benefits are incredible. Mm. I mean, the obvious, obviously, you're going to increase your strength and your muscle. Um, but even that alone is interesting because as we age, we lose muscle tissue. Mm-hmm. And we can lose even each decade 3 to 8% of our muscle mass. But more importantly, you lose about double, almost three times, 15 to 20% of your strength. Wow. So one of the biggest things in terms of if you think of your quality of life, especially as you age, if you lose that muscle tissue, um, everything gets worse because even blood sugar gets worse because muscle tissue can use the glycogen from your food and keep Mm. your blood sugar steady. Um, So that's one of the things that I always think of resistance training, incredible, but very few people do it because it's very cumbersome. um, It's very intimidating. Right. and people think, oh, I gotta do hours of this and I just don't have the time. Yeah, I feel like there's also like this misconception floating around that if you want to lose weight, you need to do cardio. And then if you want to get big and bulky, you do resistance training. And Mm. I think you could speak to like, yeah, how false yeah. that is, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, on a, on a very simple level, muscle is actually what burns fat. Mm. So if you think about it, if your muscle, if you lose muscle tissue, it does slow up your metabolism. Mm. So if you think of metabolism, you want good amount of muscle and, and also the quality of muscle. It's not just the quantity because you can have the same amount of muscle but you can activate all those muscle fibers, have more mitochondria inside those muscle fibers. So even without gaining muscle, your metabolism can improve just by improving your strength, for instance. So it really is remarkable, all the benefits. Now, it's become very sort of, I guess, trendy that everybody says there's no magic pill or whatever. You just got to be really consistent and it's boring. You got to put in all the time and effort being incredibly consistent. Oh, and you know, if you're already a bit apprehensive about doing it, that would just turn you off. Yeah, now, totally. I'm all about, and we'll go through all the Adherence research here, huge, the science and research and, and really delivering something that I think um, will benefit people. So really uh, putting, when I kind of think about this, I'm like, I'm even shocked by the recent research on this particular area because what it does is 
it allows you to see that you can actually get way better results mm. with very little time and a lot less effort. Mm. And that sounds like one of these you know, magic pills things that you're yeah. going to try and sell. But that is actually, and we're going to obviously go deep into totally. this because I just find this so compelling uh, for everybody. And it mm. doesn't matter whether we're talking to people that are maybe listening or watching that are elite athletes or people that are trying to get into their peak condition, or if it's people that are just looking to improve their health, whether it's people in their 60s, 70s, 80s um, that are looking to do something to improve their quality of life. So all across the board, um, what people will achieve by understanding this is much better quality of life, much better health, weight loss, um, improving even cholesterol. We're going to go through all the yeah. data and stats of this. Huge. Uh, blood sugar, metabolic health, obviously. Um, so that's very exciting. That mm. you know, and it really is that good. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, that's kind of a bit of an overview. Yeah, that's awesome. I think I think we should just dive into it. I think it would be helpful for everyone watching at home or wherever you are. Um, maybe we should. Um, talk a little bit about the different types of contractions because I think that'll help us understand that first study that I think you're going to go into. Mm. So could you kind of just talk about, you know, what is a concentric, eccentric or isometric um, contraction? Yeah. Yeah. So simple thing is, I mean, if I was to lift a weight, so if I just, you know, grabbed a weight and lifted Flex it up. Guns, so that's the camera. <laughs> <laughs> that's concentric. OK. Um, so the lifting phase is concentric. Mm -hmm. And then if I just hold the weight there, that's isometric. Mm -hmm. And then if I lower the weight, that's eccentric. Got it. And you know, in gyms, they might call it negatives. Yes. So you think yeah, of that as the that positive and then that's the negative part of the motion. So it's negatives or eccentric. Um, and what's fascinating is there's sort of this new understanding of how the muscle works, uh, which starts to explain some of that. but one thing, the first study that actually, I, I might just grab that and talk about it because just even this is something that even when the first time I read this study, I'm like, some of it, I sort of went, okay, that makes sense. But other parts just kind of shocked me. Mm. Um, and that's a simple one because I think a lot of people might be able to relate to that. And I'm going to grab this one here because this yeah, is please. the the effects Let's of present the facts. <laughs> yeah. Because this this was a really, really good study. It was done in Australia and this was done in twenty seventeen. And what they wanted to look at was the difference between um going up the stairs versus walking down the stairs. Hmm. So that's again a difference between concentric and eccentric. Because as you're walking up the stairs, it's a concentric movement. But as you're, yeah, so you're kind yeah. of, you know, putting your foot up. So if you think about it like doing squats, you're, you're, you, when you put your foot on a step and then you push down, that's like going or up like in a, a squat almost. or a lunge. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of going up. So that's a concentric movement. So as you go up the stairs, it's a lot more of a concentric movement. But when you're walking down the stairs, it's eccentric. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, you're putting your foot up, but as soon as the foot hits, hits the stair, then the knee is bending. So that's like going down in a mm. lunge or down in a squat. So that's the eccentric part. So most people would think, oh, you know, if I want to get fitter or healthier or whatever, and it's very, <laughs> everybody loves doing stair climbs. Yeah. So yeah, I remember. So focus and going up the stairs. When we were at the U.S. Bank Tower every year, they would have the, the I forget what they call it, but the big famous, you know, annual stair climb when it's the race to the top and it was, you know, supposed to be a marker of like peak fitness. Absolutely, because yeah. it's hard. Right. I mean, you go up a few flights of stairs, you're puffing and panting. So you just assume, well, yeah, I'm going to get much fitter, I'm going to get healthier um, and stronger, etc. going up the stairs, because it is it, much, much harder. And it makes sense mm. on the surface. You know, exactly. Like, of course, you know, it's harder, yeah. so it's got to be better. Yeah, yeah. So let's see, yeah, let's, <laughs> now let's let's see, see what, what this research, research said, because yeah. this is amazing. So. So the first thing that really struck me, that kind of shocked me when they looked at the results of this. So this was done um, in this study, they took pe people, elderly obese women. So they were on average over 70 years old. They had to be at least over 60 to be in the study. Mm. Um, and what they did was they just had a building, uh, 10 flights of stairs, and there was an elevator in the building. So it was a great controlled experiment because what they had, they had these people come in uh, twice a week 
and what they want what one group would go walk up the stairs and then take the elevator back down but the other group would take the elevator up and walk down the stairs so pretty good controlled study like that so mm. it was pure going up or pure going down they weren't doing both now the results were really remarkable and the first one that kind of shocked me the most the average um, heart rate first of all they kind of described that the average heart rate going down was about 88 so that's not very high yeah. at all so it's just almost like just sitting or standing there because at that age your resting heart rate might be in the 70s so it's only a slight elevation so you're not going to be out of breath you could have a conversation with the person beside yeah. you you know and everyone knows that you could end a few flights of stairs you're not out of breath but if you're going up <laughs> up 10 flights of stairs now their heart rate was 113 and you know for people in their 70s that's pretty high mm. so that's your puffing and panting oh, yeah. in comparison now the effect after doing this um, was that the resting heart rate and that's a really good measure for fitness so the lower your resting heart rate is the fitter you are basically so really elite athletes their resting heart rate could be in the 40s even low 40s yeah, yeah. Um, and if you're not as 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 fit it might be in the 60s, 70s, um, so roughly speaking. So the average heart rate during, um, sorry, the average, so the resting heart rate of the people going down the stairs and systolic blood pressure as well, oh, wow. uh, decreased 10% and 9%, which is amazing. Now, again, if you compared that to the people going up the stairs, it was only um, 4% of a decrease. So you're talking about two and a half times the results in blood pressure and fitness. So I mean that sounds crazy. Yeah. You know that That's very hard to get your head around because right. you can work you less assume, hard yeah. and and have better blood pressure and everything. That's Exactly. And in fitness. I mean yeah. obviously and again in the study throughout everything else, they got much better results in terms of strength. That didn't surprise me as much because when you're going down with gravity, there's more resistance basically mm. on the on the muscle as you're going down. But that eccentric, and again, we'll talk about it further, oh, yeah. has way more of an effect in terms of improving your strength than concentric does. Wow. So, but that just to start off, to kind of <laughs> go, no, whoa, amazing. get your head around that because still, if you talk, if you ask 10 people, and if I was one of them, I would have said the same thing for fitness in particular, right. going up 10 flights of stairs is going to get you much fitter than going down yes. that yeah. 10 flights of stairs, which is pretty remarkable. I bet people would like to know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, that's actionable. Yeah. Because it's yeah. great. And even in, in here where, where we have the stu studio the, in the stairwell, they, they did a lot of stuff to to encourage people yeah, to, to use the stairs yeah. and they have all these kind of health markers but again There's no arrows pointing down though <laughs> yeah because again with exercise a lot of people think oh well I, i'm going to be puffing and panting i'm going to be sweating it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of exertion and then i'm going to need to shower and get ready and take it easy before i can go back to work right. for instance but anyone can go down a few flights of stairs, not be out of breath, and get all these benefits, wow. which is remarkable. But uh, I'll talk a little bit about a few more, just even from this study, the results, because, again, um, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. So, for example, um, what they found was going down decreased triglycerides by 20%, total cholesterol 10%, LDLC down 13%, and then your HDL, your good cholesterol, increased 10%. Wow. And in comparison, again, when the people were going up the stairs, they only saw an 8% decrease in triglycerides. So, again, Compared two and a half times, yeah. Wow. Two and a half times better results. Total cholesterol. Um, only went down 3%, so compared to 10%. So that's three times that's better. Um, LDLC down 7%. Um, so and that was it so again all across the board all of these metrics so if you think about it yeah i could go down i mean going down 10 flights of stairs twice a week is not a big deal you're not even going to be out of breath and these are the type of results that you can yeah. get so that's a good one to kind of start with because it illustrates we can all the point do that. very well, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people, if they want to try and get their steps in, they'll go, well, maybe I shouldn't take the elevator all the time, and they'll start going up and down the stairs. But again, just even understanding that, 
You don't need to be out of breath. You don't need to get back to the office like yeah. where you're puffing and panting. Just go down the stairs instead. You're going to get two to three times the results and very little yeah. effort. That's so, awesome. That sounds like a little bit of a life hack for people. Exactly. You know? Yeah. That's and awesome. anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. And uh, it, it just is remarkable. So that's that's sort of like just to kind of, I guess, Tip of the iceberg. to pry your mind open yeah. because it really does. I, I had to read these studies over and over again because at first I'm like, it couldn't be that good. Like, oh, yeah. what? I'm, am I missing something here? So, I mean, I have gone through these quite a few times because it's remarkable yeah. how this works. So that's, that's what's awesome. really exciting because I really do think if people can understand what we're talking about and what we continue to talk about just in this podcast, it just lowers the entry level into resistance training. Mm. I mean, like there, go down a few flights of yeah. stairs, don't even break a sweat. Very simple you change. don't even need to puff and pant and you're going to get remarkable results. Wow. And then, of course, we can talk about taking it to another level again and, and for I mean, people that really want to get remarkable results. The perfect transition, I was just going to ask. So that's very cool. But I, I think a lot of people watching are very interested in, you know, exercise and, you know, the Actual traditional training. stuff in the yeah. gym. So yeah. I, I'm just curious what research you have um, specifically looking at, you know, the eccentric versus the, you know, the the basic, you know, Conf um, lifting concentric of, yeah, lifting. Doing because after all, it's like you ask a guy yeah. with muscle, it's like, hey, what do you do? Do you lift weights? The exactly. answer is yes. So, yeah. 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 So talk a little bit about um, yeah. what that looks like in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I did come across uh, benefits of eccentric training. Um, it was over ten years ago. In fact, mm. uh, we, we might be able to put up some footage. I actually did a, a, um, a whole program based around eccentric overload training, which again we can talk about in more detail. But and that was ten years ago because there was definitely some of these unique benefits from just the the lowering of weights mm. um, that I was fascinated with at the time. Um, but a study came out last year, so really up to date. This was done, I think, September of last year, and this was research out of Japan. Mm. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that because this awesome. is a really well-designed study because it was the first, well, the first research that I read that really it, it isolated the concentric part because mm. normally, obviously, when you lift weights, well, you have to lower it sure, back down probably, anyway. Yeah. Um, but this was a really good study because what they did was, and this was with younger men. So it's great that these studies, that first one was done with older women. This yeah. is younger men. So you'll see it's that this works that across populations responding. and male, female, young, old, etc. Awesome. It, 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 it's great. But with this, they had one group of, of men just, just doing the concentric mm. and they didn't uh, lower it back down. Okay. The other group just lowered and then the third group went up and down. Okay. So really nice study where they kind of isolated the different parts of the movement. Do you know what uh, what exercise specifically they were doing? Bicep curls. Bicep curls. Yeah. Okay. So this is a Got good it. one Got for it. yeah, because everyone thinks of like Take the out your bicep notepads, curls. Fellas. You know? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. this really is uh, amazing. So let me. Awesome. Yeah. Let's dive into it. Because this was the one that really, like I said, it kind of shocked me the most. Um, so. Comparison between concentric only, eccentric only, and concentric eccentric resistance training on the elbow flexors, which basically just means bicep curl. Yeah, thank you. So, what they found was the eccentric training increased muscle strength and thickness, similar to concentric and eccentric training, despite the despite the half training volume, suggesting that concentric contractions contributed little to the training effect. So. Essentially, what they're saying is that <laughs> obviously, if you're only lowering the weight um, and then other people are lifting and lowering, you're doing half the volume. Right. Okay. So, for half the volume, they're pretty much getting the same kind of results. And I can go through some of the numbers here. So, they looked at strength and they looked at muscle thickness. So, for example, with the muscle thickness, they saw um, an increase of 10%. Um, in terms of, of the muscle size with the eccentric only group. Hmm. And similar again, like I think it's like 10.2 and 9.7, for instance, for the when they lifted and lowered, so twice the volume, same kind of results. But with the concentric only group, it was st statistically insignificant. It was only wow. like around two, two and a half percent. So 
the lifting part, and this is what the re research has said, and I'll, I literally kind of, because I, like I like to quote them, so it's not yeah. me saying it, this is literally what they're saying at the end, which is really kind of fascinating. Um, so they said, it appears that eliminating concentric contractions in resistance training may be a choice when a specific device to perform eccentric only contraction is available, which we'll talk about as yeah, well, I, I <laughs> Vitruvian. We will get into that. Um, um, thus, it is necessary to develop a less expensive and safe training device that allows eccentric only contractions with eliminating load for the concentric phase. So, in conclusion, eccentric contractions in long muscle length provided potent stimulus for muscle strength increases in muscle hypertrophy. So, they said that the eccentric only con contractions were literally doing <laughs> next to nothing. So yeah. the lifting part. Not only that, but they're saying, how can we figure out how to eliminate them? Exactly. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, because you're w literally wasting energy doing it because you're not getting much results. And that's where all the, the effort goes into. Mm. So that's kind of fascinating. And when they look at all the strength increases, what's interesting is that if you do eccentric, you will get a little bit stronger on the eccentric movement. Mm. But that strength does not pass over into as much into the ISO kinetic, uh, the ISO um, just holding the weight there Isometric, or the yeah. eccentric. So the concentric is very specific. It'll only increase your concentric strength. Whereas when you do the eccentric, just the lowering of the weight, you're going to improve your strength all across the board. So of oh, course wow. you increase your strength eccentrically, but that strength increase also causes your concentric strength to increase as well. Wow. As well as the ISO, ISO I keep it saying isokinetic because I'm yeah. a machine, but isometric. That's a little plug um, for the future, folks. <laughs> I know. We'll get into We're that working another on time, some another cool podcast. Stuff, um, with that. But, yeah. the, but this study, to me, is just, it really is groundbreaking because always the focus on weight training for the last hundred years mm. is always been about lifting weights and everyone's struggling to lift the weights and and some people will try to lift the weights and then they just let the weight go back down yeah. now some people are smarter they know to control it on the negative negative. Um, and indeed there's research that shows what they call power training where you go explosive and fast on the mm -hmm. concentric and then slow and controlled on the eccentric. So basically just to get up there to load the weight to yeah, take the eccentric down. Exactly. Yeah. So power training, um, and there was a great big meta-analysis done last year as well, um, and they looked at all the research that power training is way more effective than just traditional strength training. Mm. So, but I wonder how much of that is just because when you go explosive on the concentric, it does allow you to lift a heavier weight. Sure. So, and then when you're going slow and controlled, you're getting more eccentric. Plus, you're going to be able to go slow and controlled with a heavier mm. weight. So I think they're, they're the reasons why wow. power training is more effective. But this really shows like this is what's going on oh, in yeah. the muscle and it's Plain way and more simple. effective. Um, and just one other thing to add to that is that when you do, this research wasn't even what we call super maximal. So in other words, one of the things about eccentric training is the lowering phase, you're actually much stronger than you are on the concentric phase. Oh yeah. So that means if I could lift, the maximum I could lift is say 100 pounds on a barbell curl, um, then technically I could actually lower 140 pounds. Mm. But the problem is how do I how do get, get it, it there? So yeah. you need someone to hand it to you uh, to be able to kind of lower that. So, but in this study, they weren't even doing super maximal. So wow. whatever weight you can lift, they were lowering. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> that's so that's, we don't even know how great the benefits could be yeah. if we go super maximal. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and yeah. if you do that, like even if you have a training partner or something, or if you want to try it yourself, you'll notice that if you only had to lower the weight of something that you can lift, mm -hmm. you'll notice that it's very effortless. Like your heart rate won't even increase. Yeah. Uh, you won't break a sweat. Um, so again, with a lot less effort. That's pretty amazing. Um, and technically, it's only 25% of the energy that you have to use. That's exactly to lower where I was going next. Okay, so it's 25%. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm interested, does that have an effect on um, people's like satiation and uh, cravings throughout the day if they're using 25, only 25% of the energy 
that you would be expending otherwise? Yeah, so that's another interesting aspect of exercise because not many people think about that because when you work out, um, you can work out at different intensity levels and obviously different volume for different amounts of time. And a big thing in the research that they show is that when you exercise, especially if you do this sort of um, you know, hour-long, high-intensity sort of cardio and, and, and uh, circuit training type of thing, mm -hmm. that you'll get very hungry afterwards because you, know, you put a bit of stress on the body, a sure. lot of cortisol, also you're depleting the muscles of glycogen, so you, your body be wanting to replace that. Mm -hmm. So a big problem is that when people exercise a lot, they get very hungry, and they also get hungry for the wrong type of foods. I was going to say, it sounds like it's going to be high carbs, high sugar. Exactly. Yeah, yeah very few people crave like just salad or Meat protein or whatever. Sure. They're, they're craving the carbs to replace the glycogen, so they'll end up wanting to, to go for sweeter type foods. So Should then probably make you overeat the amount of exactly. sugar and carbs you actually need. That's what happens yeah. because theoretically, they're, they because people just think, oh, how many calories am I burning while I exercise? Mm -hmm. But the effects on hunger is huge because if you're just going to get hungry, it's so easy to just eat those calories back afterwards. Yeah. And it's very hard to ignore your hunger, especially mm -hmm. long term and in research. Wow. People can't do that. So it's very few people can do it. And plus, it's just it's not a pleasant experience. Yeah, yeah. Like, why do you you're going to be starving and you're forcing yourself not to eat? It's not great, but I do have. Yeah, a, I was going to say a little little recap from that section. Yeah. So, Concentric training doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Eccentric does. Yeah. You're using 25% of the energy. Yeah. And it's going to make you less hungry. <laughs> yeah. And, and not awesome. only that, but in, in this one, this was the uh, effects of, of eccentric exercise and appetite regulated hormones and food and preferences in men. And what they found in this one was that, um, so when they were doing the, this was in running, so downhill running was to get the eccentric. Mm. And then they just had. Uh, what they call front running. So um, the people that were going doing the eccentric running going downhill they indicate a greater liking of savory foods over sweet foods. So you're going to much prefer sa more savory, which is probably protein rich type foods. And is that just because you're not depleting your glycogen as much? Well, I would think so, yeah. yeah I mean, sure. they, don't, they didn't quite explain exactly what the mechanism is and there's theories or whatever, mm. but the effect is you do eccentric and you're actually not going to want as much sweet food. You're going to go mm. for savory food. So that's pretty awesome. It's another wow. uh, very important and good element of the eccentric training. Yeah, could you explain a little bit more about how the muscle actually works and moves on a micro scale? Because I think that'll maybe kind of help people understand a little bit more of what's going on underneath the surface when it comes to these center training. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I had to kind of go deep into this. And again, even our understanding of how muscle works is evolving. Mm. I thought, oh, it's just mechanical. We must know how this works. Of course, yeah. And um, But all these things, like for instance, is what's called the sliding filament theory. Mm -hmm. So how muscle contracts is you've got you've got myosin and you've got actin. Mm -hmm. So these are these these uh, planes in the muscle. So actin, there's a little bit of a gap, and myosin um, has what's called these myosin heads. So these tiny little, they look like little tadpoles. Yeah. But they're these little things that attach on and then pull the actin like this, and that's what causes the muscle to contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these myosin heads, um, it's called a power stroke. Mm -hmm. So it's like they attach on and they pull it like that. So I always think of an analogy, it's like swimming. You put your hand in the water and then you pull. And then if you're going forward in the water, you just keep just going keep like that. And that's forward. like concentric. But if okay, you, so that's the myosin head pulling. That's the myosin head pulling the Got actin. It. So if you imagine the water's coming this way because you're, you're swimming along and you're moving that way. Um, so the water is coming this way. So when you put your hand in the water, there's not a lot of pressure on your hand or your wrist because no. you're kind of going with the current, if you like, because you're going in that same direction. Mm -hmm. But now if you imagine the water is stagnant, you're not moving, and then you put your hand in and try to pull it, a little bit more pressure on mm -hmm. your hand or wrist because now it's stagnant. It's not going, you're not going with the current. Mm -hmm. But if you imagine the water is going away from you, so now so instead of... the current. Yeah, because instead of the... the, the 
the actin coming together, it's now going outwards because it's the eccentric, it's the negative part. Mm. So now the water is going opposite. So when you put your hand in the water, there's a lot more pressure on the myosin heads. Got so it. in the power stroke, so if you think again of your of it like your hand and your wrist, so that extra pressure on the hand and the wrist, that's what causes the damage which the RNAs and signals the DNA say, hey, we need stronger, better myosin here. Wow. And that is actually what causes, that's why it's so much more effective. And there is this other mechanism, because again, this is quite new and really in the last 10 years, because this theory only really explained concentric and isometric contraction, but they're like, where is all this extra strength coming from the eccentric? Mm. And it's actually this protein called Titan. And that's actually the longest word in English because it's like over 30 to 35,000 amino acids. So yeah, yeah. they're here all day if you want me to read that one. That's okay. <laughs> um, Next but it's, podcast. It's, uh, <laughs> it's one of the largest proteins in the body. Um, and that's sort of like, a, um, if you think of the, the myosin and actin filaments, they're going like that. But the titan is actually holds on to it. So like an accordion. Hmm. Um, so that's kind of holding on to it. And the titan can kind of, the calcium comes in and causes mm -hmm. the muscle contract. And that gets a little bit stiffer. And that allows you that extra strength. Because if you think about it, again, of all the examples, like if you fell off, you know, height and you come down, that's an eccentric motion. So we need to be, have extra strength it's for preserving the body and not getting injured and right. dying practically if you, too bad of a fall. So that's where the Titan kicks in and gives you that extra strength wow. as well. So that's the whole mechanism. But if you think of that, oh yeah, the water is going the opposite direction. That's why it's way more effective. Wow. A lot less energy, but we can, in this case, damage is good because then you're going to get much stronger and improve all your metabolic health. Yeah, awesome. So that's how it works. Cool, cool. So I'm curious, does the eccentric training target a specific type of muscle fiber? Um, yeah, yeah, it does. So just to give a little bit of an overview, in general, we've got two main different types of muscle in the body, mm -hmm. two very different energy systems. We have a whole video on that, which I can link to. But the, the quick one is we've got slow twitch or type one, mm -hmm. um, and that's very much for endurance. So now the great thing about the type one is you hold that forever. Um, right. So even someone in their 80s could go for and you'll see them go hiking for hours. Oh, yeah. So they've got great stamina. They just obviously don't have the same strength. So the other type of muscle tissue is fast twitch or type two. Mm. And that's from strength training. Now that's the type of muscle that we lose as we age. Mm. So when they look at muscle loss, it's always the type two. So again, another reason why I think resistance training, definitely from a longevity perspective is so, so important. Yeah. Uh, really, really vital. Now within type two, there's still different, there's, there's two A, and then it's 2X. Two yeah. They used to say 2B, but that's really only in sort technically it's 2X. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's also, it's it's not just a hard cutoff from 2A to 2X. Right. It's sort of this 2A, AX as well in the middle. So it, it's more where there's like gradual, lots of different types, mm. uh, rather than there's just some that are 2A, some that are 2X. So you get 2AX and 2X. So in general, the eccentric will get more the 2X, which is the even stronger type mm. of muscle tissue. Um, That's great. So that, that really does help as well. So it does target more of the 2X yeah. of muscle fiber. And the, the fast twitch type 2 muscle fiber, that's also your larger muscle fiber too, is that correct? Yeah, well, generally in the body, you'll have about 50-50 of different of those muscle fibers. Mm. Um, and th the body can convert some of them over a little mm. bit and then genetics come into it too. So some people will have more, it'd be better for instance for endurance type stuff mm. compared to strength and vice versa. But you can change it as well a little bit. There is a bit of flexibility in that. Um, but like I said, it's, the, it's gonna have the greatest impact on your overall metabolism and rate of burning fat, the, the type two muscle fiber. Yeah. Um, cause it, cause type one already is pretty active. So the change is not gonna occur as much whereas the type two is gonna change a lot more. So you've got a lot more capacity to have a bigger impact mm. on your overall energy metabolism, et cetera. So that's, awesome. so that's where the, 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 the muscle fibers come into it. Awesome, yeah. Well, I, and we've talked a little bit about, um, you know, 
exercise, lifting weights, putting them down. I'm curious, a huge part of overall health and fitness is mobility, injury prevention. Mm -hmm. Um, People talk about stretching and why you should be doing yoga and all these different things. I'm curious how this type of training plays into all of that. Yeah, well, that's another area where eccentric training is amazing. In fact, a lot of people in that area that are specializing in rehabilitation, for instance, they are now focusing more and more on the eccentric training. Mm. Because here's something that's fascinating with eccentric training. What it does is, so again, you're as the muscle is lengthening, because that's what's happening, mm-hmm. um, you're applying pressure. So it actually improves your range of motion very effectively. In fact, it's twice as effective compared to static stretching, wow. which is amazing. So again, got a couple of, of um, studies out the here. Research. Um, let me grab these ones here. So um, so this is a comparison of the immediate effects of eccentric training versus static stretch on hamstring flexibility in high school and college athletes. So what's even in the research, it's kind of interesting what they say, because I'm always quoting this, but everyone thinks I'm crazy when I say <laughs> these things, is recent studies have suggested that static stretching may not be an effective method for stretching the muscles prior to competition. Everybody does this yes. static stretching before competition. It actually weakens the muscle. Right. Um, and there's a lot of research to show that. And in some cases, can actually increase your chances of injury. So th- literally the first thing that the researchers kind of It's so funny because you go into a gym that. and you're not doing static stretching. Everyone's looking at you like you're, like you're crazy. You exactly, know? yeah. Like yeah. you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. Um, so they said... Um, Results, a significant difference was indicated by follow-up analysis between the control group and both the static stretch and then the eccentric. So in the static stretch, they gained five degrees in terms of mobility, in terms Mm. of uh, range of motion, should I say. But the eccentric group was 9.48 degrees. So almost Almost double. So you're getting much better range of motion by doing eccentric compared to static. In addition, the gains of the eccentric training group were significantly greater than the static group. So, um, so pretty awesome. Um, Interesting. And then this is another one here: the effects of eccentric strength training on flexibility and strength. Um, so again, however, recent studies show that eccentric only training improves both flexibility and strength, and effectively lowers risk of injury. Conclusion, there is clear evidence that eccentric training is an effective method for changes in muscle architecture leading to both flexibility and strength improvements for the lower limb. So, um, and I'm not an expert in, I'm not in rehabilitation or any of these things, but a lot of experts are going deep into this just for that purpose. So, but one of the things, again, I want to kind of point out is that another thing that as we age is we do lose range of motion. Mm. So if you think of the muscles, like literally they don't stretch as much. Um, so, um, you know, someone in their 70s or 80s are not going to have the same mobility as when you're in your 20s. Mm. Um, so what's interesting is when you do static stretching, a lot of the effects is more on the nervous system. Um, and maybe this is an oversimplification, oh, but it's kind of like you just improve your pain threshold and you get used to it. But you got to stretch almost every day. And if you stop stretching for a couple of weeks, you it just reverts it. back. Yeah. What's great in the research is that when you do the eccentric training, so you're lengthening the muscle and applying pressure at the same time, that seems to, and literally they said it there, it literally changes the the mechanical structure of the muscle and elongates the muscle. So then the effects are long lasting, Wow! which is incredible. So that's what I love about this is you don't need, obviously you don't need to do static stretching before you do it. And if you do eccentric training, um, that in itself is actually going to be better than stretching. So you're going to get better mobility. Um, And the other thing as well in the research, and I have it here somewhere, but I'll, I'll just put the links in the notes or whatever. Um, But that not only does it improve the muscle, but it actually improves the tendons and the joints. Really? And in fact, in in some of that research, it even shows that it's going to improve your bone density as well. Wow. So if you think of the joints, the bones, the tendons, all that's improving with eccentric training, and you're not getting as much of those improvements with concentric. Wow. So that is phenomenal. That's interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. I know like a lot of people will do 
back squats for like axial loading, you know, because it's it's good for your bone density to prevent osteoporosis. And I only imagine that adding the eccentric squat mm. for that would just up the benefits. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and of course, like I said, I mean, even if you're doing the same weight that you can do concentrically, it's a lot safer because you're much stronger as mm. well. So um, you're not kind of maxing out and you're not, so you're not jerking or doing anything right. like that because you can just take that weight and lower it. Um, but just going back to making resistance training, like with this understanding, it is a whole new paradigm shift mm. in, because it, the results do last much longer. In fact, just because <laughs> I want to, I want to quote another. Glad study you asked. <laughs> I know. Just as I said it, I'm like, um, this is again pretty amazing. This is one where one weekly bout of eccentric exercise is sufficient to induce health promoting effects. So wow. what they did in this research, this was actually done in Greece, um, and this was back in 2010. But what they found was that for the first time only that they found was that 30 minutes of eccentric exercise per week for eight weeks was sufficient to improve health risk factors. Mm -hmm. Now the results were all across the board. So for example, uh, blood glucose dropped considerably, your A1C levels dropped considerably, um, insulin improved. So all of these metrics improved pretty dramatically and there was only 30 minutes. So there was saying here, it's clear that eccentric training um, can induce health promoting effects that may improve quality of life. It is worth noting that these favorable effects induced after performing only 30 minutes of eccentric exercise per week for eight weeks. Moreover, the effects of eccentric exercise on muscle dysfunction were minimized after eight weeks of training, whereas the positive effects of eccentric training were still evident. Wow. And they're just talking about when you exercise, you get a bit of post uh, um, muscle soreness, but that's a good measure that it's actually working, sure. um, which is amazing. So this is, um, I, I, gotta, I gotta quote this one because this is pretty remarkable. So eccentric training increased eccentric torque 35%, concentric torque 17%, isometric 19%. So way much better increases in strength. Now, again, this is one of those moments where like, whoa, the favorable effects of eccentric training as evidence in the present investigation are probably equal to or even superior to classic modes of training like resistance and aerobic exercise lasting for about an hour and performed three to five times per week. Wow. So when they looked at other research that to get similar results that they got from 30 minutes of eccentric training in this study, they had to perform three to three to five times a week an hour. So that's three to five hours compared to, compared to one, 30 minutes, one 30 minute session. One 30 minute session. Wow. I mean, that's huge. That that is huge. So when you know, like I said, I get it. People just say, oh, you just got to be consistent and train for hours. Sure. Truly understanding this, the eccentric portion, and understanding how this works, it really is remarkable. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say, I feel like one of the major barriers for a lot of people into exercise is the time commitment. Yeah. And so looking at that, obviously, that mm. shows with the center training, we can spend a lot less time in the gym. I'm just curious, like how would you implement that into an exercise program? Would you tell people to go to the gym and do negatives once a week or mm. how often do you think people should be putting this into their routine? Well, so, I mean, again, I, I'm kind of looking at it almost on two levels. I mean, first of all, for people that are been intimidated, understandably, um, and find the whole thing cumbersome, um, just doing something like literally 30 minutes once a week uh, is great. Again, just going down the stairs and instead of the up the stairs. Yeah. And they're very like amazing results for metabolic health. So if you <laughs> need to improve your blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, they're very, very good results mm. without having to take any medication. Wow. Um, so, so I would kind of look at it from the point of view, even if I think of my, my parents or whatever, I'm like, um, wow, all they need to do is a few minutes of eccentric training and they're gonna get all these results. They don't even need to break a sweat. So it just lowers that 
that entry level. Now, obviously, what we do, we want to get the maximum results for everybody coming sure. in here. So we recommend coming in three to four times a week. Mm. Um, but our workouts are only 20 minutes. But again, wow. and we're doing we're taking this a stage further because we're doing what's called eccentric overload. So mm. because you're stronger on the eccentric, we're utilizing that. So we're taking a weight that they can't even lift doing yeah. that. So they're going to get even better results yeah. again, which is, and they're always shocked because the great thing is with the machines that we use, it makes that so much easier. So, so why don't we go ahead and I'd love to hear, just tell everyone about the methodology that we are implementing here at Resistance Studio. Mm. What's different about it? Um, and how are we how are we use how are we getting eccentric training? What are the machines we're using? Yeah. Kind of give us a little bit in on that. Yeah, well it, it these two areas kind of um, are really sort of the future because understanding the science of eccentric training and then using the latest cutting edge research and technology that is built into these machines is amazing because what we have is, um, and those that are listening, we, obviously we can show video of it, but we use these machines that it's just like a little platform, like a little thing that you step on, mm -hmm. but it has these two electric motors. Now this, these machines are amazing because it generates up to 440 this pounds of resistance. This is the Vitruvian this machine. This is the Vitruvian yeah. machine. And, uh, and there are other machines out there, and I tried them all, but I just love the form factor and the implementation to me is the best yeah yeah because uh, very few of them have what's called eccentric only mm. so even though they might have ways that you can add more weight on the eccentric you still have to do the concentric so you're wasting all that energy whereas we love to do that eccentric overload so that you're just resisting as much as you can on the negatives mm. so that's the beauty about the vitruvian and I, and look this technology in it's like the iPhone when it comes out first. Um, it's going to become ubiquitous mm. and you're going to see gyms with this type of technology in 10 to 20 years from now. And uh, Vitruvian are just like the Tesla of the, of yeah, the industry. Yeah. They're way ahead and they're implementing it in an amazing way and the best form factor. So we're using those because before when I put together the eccentric workouts, it was great because I, I, you know, but but the problem was the efficiency went out the window because mm -hmm. in order to get the overload, you had to go up with two hands. Because you're stronger, you can't get you the weight up. get it up there. So you had to go up with two hands and down with one. Yeah. But now you got to double up on all the exercises. Right. And we did the same with squats. You go up with two legs down with one to yeah. be able to get that eccentric overload. So these machines are amazing. So we really emphasize that. Now we still do some of the concentric right. um, because, you know, I, just, I sort of almost use that as a warm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you do that at a little bit of a lower get some weight. Blood in there. And even to get the mind muscle connection, I do Absolutely. think there's something yeah, in that. that. So you really connection. focus on, on, yeah, because the electrons and you're going to get that explosiveness. Yes. Again, going back to that power training, because that's been shown to be very effective and then resist. But yeah. then we go straight into that eccentric overload. And so yeah. that's how our workouts are only 20 minutes, but we're utilizing that. We're not taking much rest between sets and reps. So, you're, so cause we want to get like every benefit that yeah. you possibly can, BDNF, heart rate, intensity, yes. growth hormone, testosterone, you name it. All we the stuff get that comes with intensity all in the one. Married with the eccentric. Yeah, yeah I yeah. was going to tell for the folks at home, the eccentric only mode on the Vitruvian is amazing. And so mm. we're talking, you know, we were talking about how it's so cumbersome. You have to lift up the heavy weights and let it down. This is literally taking away all the resistance on the way up. So if I'm doing a bicep curl, I'm curling up nothing. It mm. loads and I can go as heavy as I possibly can resist down. Yeah. Just pretty amazing. Yeah. Highly yeah. recommend trying that out on the flat bench. It'll change your life. Yeah. Yeah. And I love yeah. it because this is always the first thing that I do. And, and even, again, even people have never worked out before. And we've got, we've got uh, members all ages and we've got, you know, women in their seventies or whatever. And, and we will just, I'll just go, okay, can you lift this? Oh no, that's too much. Okay. Mm and maybe it's 30 pounds or something on a bicep curl. I said, okay, you can't lift that. No, no, no. Okay, so now we're going to do 40 pounds. Mm. They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but of course, there's nothing on it's the content. Shocking. And then the, the 40 pounds, they can lower. And then they're like, wow, I can do yeah. it. And then they're going to get all of the benefits we're talking about, which is phenomenal. So yeah. that's, it, it really is a game changer because 
you have to, you actually have to start to look at everything different because even when they look at the research on how much rest you need in between sets and reps and periodization and how often you should train it's all based on concentric or you know mm. th uh, that type of training whereas with eccentric it changes everything so you have to sort of throw out the legacy and, and uh, look yeah. at it with fresh eyes and, and look at it new. And that's what we're doing, obviously, to be really at the cutting edge. So we just want to get people the best results. And obviously, people can come in to get their own machine. So it's not intimidating. No one's going to say, hey, get off quick or whatever. Um, and it doesn't matter what you're lifting, because you can have, you know, in class, one person could be lifting 20 pounds, the other person could be lifting 200 pounds. Sure, sure. Looks the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? So it's not ego focused, <laughs> like how many things are on it. So all the egos left outside. It's right. just about each person getting the best results, really good environment. And for the first time ever, as well, yeah. which is the thing, is you can do it in a class, which is great because you yeah. can just follow and see what the instructor is doing rather than just hearing them talking yeah. to you. A lot of people are visual learners, mm -hmm. so that can, and you've got mirror neurons, so that can really help you make sure your form is right, your pacing is right, so that you get the best out of every workout. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, so what I'm hearing is uh, work out less time, yeah. get better results, use less energy, Sounds pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> one other thing, because uh, this is an, a really important point, actually, because, again, as we get older, when you lose strength, etc., cetera, um, one of the major things that's going to decrease the quality of life, that if you fa have a fall, anyone over the age of 65, for instance, they fall and break their hip. Yeah. Um, 30 percent of them, I'm quoting Peter. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, 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 this out one. Outlive, <laughs> yeah. which we highly recommend. Um, Maybe we'll link that as well. Yeah. But but he, he, um, what happens within within 12 months, 30 percent of people actually won't serve, like they will die yeah. within 12 yeah, months. It's crazy to hear um, that. Now, when you fall, um, it's always an eccentric movement. And again, in the research, even for runners, etc., they always say any injuries that happen, even in hamstrings, it's when when people are sprinting and then having to slow down. But if you fall and you put your foot out, mm. that's like an eccentric lunge or an eccentric squat. Interesting. Or if you've got to put your hand out, if you totally fall, that's like an eccentric bench press. Wow. So by improving your eccentric strength, now remember, concentric won't improve your eccentric strength, only eccentric, but does work the other way around. So improving your eccentric strength is great for stability as well. Mm. Um, obviously, as all the stuff, Just range of motion, yeah. but incredible for preventing um, injury um, wow. and for falls, etc. If you're eccentrically much stronger, that's fantastic. Yeah. Another huge benefit, yeah. absolutely huge. So whether you're young, old, yeah. whatever your goals are, improving your metabolic health, you want to burn off fat way faster, um, your resting metabolic rate from this jumps up dramatically even after one workout. It stays elevated by over 9% and that's for 72 hours. That's three days later. So 24 hours a day, you're burning way more fat. So great for that. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, amazing for getting into shape. Um, and for me, for longevity and metabolic health for people, because now so few people have got good metabolic health, mm. great way to do it. And again, I keep coming back to this. You don't even have to break a sweat. You can <laughs> do this and it's 25% of the effort and you're going to get even more results. So it really lowers the, the entry bar. And then if you are into training, go for the overload eccentric yeah. and then you're going to break through any kind of... Uh, any sticking points that you've been at, um, it, you're going to get even better results, which is wow. awesome. That's awesome. Well, I think you uh, you hit your points and you laid out all the um, all the details um, very uh, eloquently. And uh, thank you for presenting the research for us. That's really nice to hear. A lot of people like to talk without <laughs> showing the research. So well, I love quoting it's, it because it's, it's it, awesome to see when that. When I read it, I'm like, I'm blown away all the time. It's just great research that's out there. And between that and marrying it with the incredible technology mm. of these machines, we're in a l great situation to really get this out to people. But like I said, for people watching, just going down the stairs, you know, yeah. it's very easy ways to implement this and get incredible benefits. Yeah. Um, and if you're lucky enough to be I was gonna near say, downtown, if you're in Los Angeles, in, yeah, come we, our way, give it a shot. Yeah, and we work with people remotely as well. And we do recommend that machine because it's just awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. 
Well, that's it on uh, eccentric training, I guess. For and, the moment. Uh, yeah, for the moment. <laughs> I'm sure there will be more. Buckle yeah. up. Yeah. There will be more. Uh, yeah, we will see you guys on uh, episode two. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in.